I want to explain the TX6000. This is how it will come in the box. So when you get this thing out of the box, it's going to look like this. I'm going to show you the battery install. Uh, batteries are not included with the machine, but if you do buy batteries through us, this is what you're going to get. It's a universal battery, 12350 is a size, and this is a deep cycle, non-spillable. So it's sealed, you can turn it any which way, it's not going to leak out. So, step number one, when you get your machine, it's going to come out of the box like this. Separately, you're going to have a removable handle. You will find in there a ball. Uh, depending on whatever size ball you ordered. So the ball is simple. It goes into, this is our jack stand. This is a removable item. You'll see this is a conventional bottle jack and this piece slides up and down. And on the end you'll see there's a little cup here and that meets up with the bottle jack. So that cup goes on and it'll drop right in there. And the idea is you put the jack up and it locks it up against the tongue of your trailer. So the ball stand goes in here and when you hook up to a trailer you want the bottle jack facing the checker plate. You'll take your ball and that just threads in and you can change it to the 1 and 7 8, the 2 inch, the 2 and 5 16 uh, and you don't need to tighten it down, you just get it so it bottoms out and that's it because all of the pressure once this goes up locks it against here so this doesn't need to be tightened up. Next thing you want to do is install your handle. You will see there's a hole here, and then on the back of the machine, there's a pin. So if we come around over here, you will see this quarter inch clevis pin. So you just swing this out of the way. It's a spring loaded thing. The handle is going to go in, obviously with the handle facing that way. That way it would be incorrect. The handle goes level with the ground. You just slide that guy in. And then we're just going to line up the pin here. Get that in all the way, and that will just tighten right around. And now your handle is locked in place. Now, you will see we have an electronic control on here. Well, it has to plug in. So this is the one end. And on the end of this, what they call a cannon plug, you will see right on the top here is this little divot. That divot must be facing up when it goes into the female end. And if you look in on the female end, you will see there's a metal kind of key in there on the top side. So when you insert this, keep this groove up, get it in the center, and just kind of give it a little bit of a wiggle, and the pins will all line up. Push it in tight, and then you just tighten this up, and it just needs to be snug. You don't need to use a wrench or anything. And that's it. I'll also explain here our switches. We have an on-off power switch. Up is on, down is off. And this is your high speed, low speed. So up is fast or high speed and down is slow. So you use your slow when you're getting some fine positioning, but for general moving, you would go up and then with your variable speed throttle, you can go from zero to full speed. This is a jack handle, which is removable. Okay, so this thing comes in and out. And I'll explain that in a moment, how that works with our bottle jack. We're going to lift up the lid now, and the jack handle will rest against the, the main handle, and that will hold it up in the up position. You will see inside of here now, this unit has an optional 8 hour charger, which is on board. Uh, if you look in inside your unit, you're going to find three of these clips. I only have one in here because I'm, I'm going to show you how these batteries connect, but you'll have three of these clips. You'll see this, and I'll explain in a moment how this goes together but you have three red plugs on the main harness for one, two, three batteries. Then you will see in here, on the inside, these three all come together to this gray clip, and this gray clip is now a 36 volt. So you can disconnect it here, and you've disconnected all power to the machine. You'll also notice that our battery charger, if you get that option, it connects into the 36 volts. So it's a 36 volt charger, and it will equally charge all batteries at the same time. If you get this, you'll see there's another plug that goes in over here. And this is like a standard um, PC computer jack. It's the same kind of power plug that every computer's got if it's a Windows based. And that plug will just go right into here. And of course, you're going to plug this into 120 volt, 60 hertz power, normal outlet. 
and then just an on off. And it explains on here what happens. You have um, when the power is on, you'll have a green on this or red on this little LED on the side. And as it's charging, it'll be yellow, and when it's fully charged, it's green. But it's a it's a zero maintenance. You plug it in, and forget about it. It just does its thing. So um, our batteries. We'll explain how this connects. So when you get these things, the battery's gonna come with two little bolts, and I'm gonna use uh, two 3 8 wrenches to tighten them up. And you'll see here, it has this little plastic handle. So it's actually easier if you put the plug in underneath the handle so you can grab it and maneuver these things afterwards. So I am going to give this red line a little bend here. We're gonna go in. now. One important thing is the bolt, I want the head to go in from this side. Uh, and the reason for that is the distance here on the side of the battery, I don't want anything protruding out on this side because we have a metal conductive body on here. And you'll see in a minute that the end of this battery post will get fairly close to that. So when we install this, I'm gonna put the, the bolt in this way. And then we have a flat washer, a lock washer, and a nut. So the flat washer goes on, then the lock washer, and then our nut. And we'll just spin this guy on. And we're gonna tighten that up so it's snug. I'm going to do the same for the black. So obviously black to black or black is negative post on the battery and the red is the positive. And that's really all you need to know as far as the polarity of the batteries because once the red plugs are in place and hooked up correctly, you can never hook things up in the machine incorrectly. All right, so now we have three batteries. All three connectors are on. Very important, red to positive, black to negative. This is important. One additional thing, it's not necessary, but if you want to as a safety precaution, get yourself a roll of black electrical tape, and we're just gonna wrap and protect the red terminal or the positive post of each battery. So I'll quickly show you how we do that. Okay, now you can take your time and do this as nicely as you want, but the purpose of this, when I have that covered, now if I take a conductive item like a wrench and I touch it to there and I go to that post, if I did that on that one, there'd be big old sparks and it would start welding and short out. Now it's not possible to short this battery at all, no matter what happens. Because you will notice inside of our lid here, this metal body, if the battery were in and the machine flipped upside down or who knows what happened, it is possible to arc it. Now, I can touch this here and nothing is gonna arc. So it just adds a level of safety to your battery and it's very economical. You can go to Walmart and buy that for probably a dollar. We're gonna now install these in the machine. So we just take them one at a time. We're gonna hold the battery harness up out of the way and we just drop all three of these in. And then we connect these things up and it doesn't matter which order you put these in obviously you know it's going to lay the harness will lay nice in here like this but if you have these crossed it's not going to matter because it's taking 12 volts from each battery and then in the wiring what we've done it converts it into 36 volts you can't mix it up so keep this all in get everything to kind of lay nice and flat in here okay we're all connected you will notice inside the machine, we have a, this is a 12 volt fuse. It's a 20 amp fuse and it's a removable automotive style fuse. What this does, when that's in, is it goes up and this actually feeds the, um, a relay that runs our switching in here. You'll also notice down here is a circuit breaker. 
This is a 50 amp circuit breaker that protects the main motor. Uh, and this one here also protects the power going up to your trailer. If for some reason this fuse does blow, probably it's a case of your trailer has got some bad wiring. Now, no one wants to admit this, but everyone's trailer gets older, the wiring sits around and corrodes, and it's possible that your trailer wiring can be bad at some point. I know it's happened to me before. If it is, any short's going to come through and we'll just pop this thing. So that's a safety feature on the machine. Now, we're all set. We just close the lid and we're ready to start moving trailers. I want to take a few minutes and explain the proper way to connect our jack assembly to our trailer. So there's some important things here. First of all, we want to make sure we get the right ball size. So you'll notice here on my trailer, it actually says here, only a 2 and 5 16th ball. You will always find also on the side of the tongue here, so stamped over here it says 2 and 5 16th. So most trailers will say, here's the proper size. So only use a 2 and 5 16th. So if I use a 2 inch ball on this trailer, it would not work because the whole purpose is we want to lock and pull down and be square to the tongue. So, just to give you an idea what we're trying to achieve, this goes up and then we latch our lock on here, that is important. So now it just hangs there by its own weight. Then we're going to pump our jack up and we want this tight, tight so it locks itself square and it can't rock back and forth. If it's rocking, it means you don't have this tight. It needs to go up and be firm in there. Also, the jack needs to be, or the bottle jack needs to be forward or in line with the tongue of the trailer. That's also very important. So, put this back in the machine. The ball stand is facing backwards and, and it's also important that this little cup is on the bottle jack itself. So it must be dropped in, and this must all be kind of in line with this V facing the back of the machine. So we're gonna drive up underneath the ball. Okay, we are underneath the ball. I want to lower the tongue down onto the ball. And I also wanna get down and just make sure that we're kind of straight in line with that cup here. The hardest part about this whole job is running your trailer jack up and down. Okay, so once we get down, a little bit of the weight is on the machine. We want to flip this down. Now, I can see right away I got a problem because that should lock down nicely. So I need to open this up again. I need to back the machine up because it's too far this way. So I'm going to lift this back up just a bit. And I'm going to drive the machine back just a tiniest little bit. There, I got a little pressure on it. Now I'm going to drop it down again. There, that thing locked down and seat is seated nicely. So I know the little catch underneath here is locked onto the ball. Okay, next step in this whole assembly, you need to remove the jack handle. You will see on the jack handle, there's a little groove here. That groove acts as a key that goes onto this, this bolt or screw with pins on it. So you'll see that that groove, I set it in, and now I'm gonna use this as a wrench. So clockwise would be tight, counterclockwise would be loose. So I wanna make sure this is turned tight clockwise and I want it to be fairly snug. Now I know that the bottle jack is ready to be operated. I insert the handle into the jack here. And as I pump this up, you will see my plate will start to go up. Now, I want that tight like a tiger, so I wanna get some good pressure on there. Okay, now I know that that is locked square. And the purpose of that is if it wasn't locked tight, our wheels would just walk back and forth. So now that this thing stays square, we use the leverage on this thing to pull our trailer around. Our handle can go back in the clips here. We also need to bring our jack completely up. So when the 
machine is not moving or the trailer is stationary, it's very difficult for me to turn it. You gotta put a lot of pressure in it because it's just skidding. But as the wheels are rolling, it makes it much easier to turn. So when the machine is on, I am up in fast speed because I know there's nothing around for me to hit. I can control the throttle here. I do need to put a little bit of pressure on it, like it takes a bit of work to pull us over, but I also have an over 7,000 pound trailer, so that's to be a bit expected. is clear when I get to a curb like this a bit of a grade speed is my friend so if I get the momentum it will want to kind of when it gets to the tough spot it'll, the momentum will just make it go over the curb so I'll do this two ways if I do this slow it may or may not go up here I don't know yet Well, it actually did it fine. But what I wanted to demonstrate is when I get to a curve like that, and if it won't, if it gets stuck and spins, just back up a little bit and then get a run at it. So if I go with a bit of speed, the momentum kicks it up and over and it walks up a curve just fine. 